What's up, everybody? How's it going? Just before we start the video, does something look different about my face? Over the last few weeks, a lot of people have stopped me and asked me, like, Clement, did you do something to your face? You look a little bit different, can't quite put a finger on it. Can you? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking on the phone with one of my former uh, engineering managers at Google. He's an L7, so pretty high up there. And we were talking about engineering manager interviews. He was confirming a lot of things that I already knew, including the fact that when you are an engineering manager interviewing for a job at Google or other big tech companies, you get one or two coding interviews, specifically algorithm style interviews that are on the easier side. So think, you know, easy or medium questions. And this is something that I already knew. That's why I've always told engineering managers not to discount coding interview prep. Don't only focus on systems design and behavioral stuff because you're going to be tested on coding interviews. By the way, if you're an engineering manager or a software engineer preparing for technical interviews, do check out my company, AlgoExpert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a discount on the platform. But so the reason that Google gives these coding interviews to engineering managers, even though engineering managers are not expected to write code on the job. In fact, 99% of them will never write a line of code on the job. My former manager hasn't written a line of code on the job in the last like three years. So why do they give these coding interviews? Well, the reason is they want to verify that you haven't completely forgotten how to code, that you still know you know, the basic fundamentals of programming. You can still write a function, a for loop, conditions. They don't want you to be someone who has completely forgotten how to code. Now, this got me thinking, can you actually forget how to code? Can you be a former software engineer, someone who worked as a software engineer, and then forget how to code to the point where you cannot even pass an easy algorithm question like, you know, checking if a string is a palindrome or checking if an array is a subsequence of another array. And these are pretty trivial problems that at that level, you'd expect that you would be able to do. So I think that you can sort of forget how to code, but I'm gonna give you three things that I think you can do that I've done that have helped me not fall into the really like bad place of completely or almost completely forgetting how to code. You see, coding is like most other skills. It is a skill that takes practice to become good at it. It is a skill that has a decent amount of knowledge to it, like you have to learn the rules of programming, the fundamentals of programming. But then it is also a skill that has a lot of like muscle memory involved. And so I think that there are really two ways in which you can forget how to code. The first one is that you effectively fall behind, like, you know, new tech comes up every day, new ways of doing things. And if you are not constantly, you know, doing the job of a software engineer, you will inevitably forget how to code or more so not learn the new things that you need. As an example, if you're a front end engineer who's worked in React over the last, let's say five years, but over the last two years, you stopped working in React and you stopped coding. Well, if you jump in a React code base today, you're going to see hooks and you're gonna have no idea what they are or how they work. And you might have even forgotten things like, you know, how do you update state in React? That's, you know, one of the components of forgetting how to code. The other one, which is, in my opinion, the scarier one, because it's less about learning and more about doing, this one I can only describe as, it is pretty easy to become rusty at coding. The less coding you do, over a long period of time, the rustier you will become. And here, I have definitely experienced this because a lot of you who have been watching this channel for the last few years have heard me often joke that I am a washed up developer because I haven't been employed as an actual software engineer at, at tech companies in almost three years now, which is kind of crazy to say. And my role at Algo Expert, although at the beginning it was definitely that of a software engineer because I basically built the entire platform, or at least the front end side of it. 
But over the years, I have progressively become less and less of a software engineer at Algo Expert and more and more of a CEO with, you know, whatever the responsibilities of a CEO are. And so over the last two years especially, there have certainly been times where I have flirted with being rusty at coding. And that's why I've made all these self-deprecating jokes of I'm a washed up developer. Now, that being said, I think that most of the time I've been a little bit too self-deprecating because ultimately I do think that I'm still a competent software engineer. I still very much know how to code. I can you know, develop any front end feature like fairly easily, even a complex front end feature. I can still do coding interviews, systems design interviews. I guess we're talking just about coding right now, but you get the idea. And the reason that I have not really become super rusty is because of three things that I've continued to do over the last two years, especially that you can do too. The first one is I have, quite frankly, continued to code in real world applications. I've been fortunate that at Algo Expert, if I want to, I can just go in the front end code base and develop a feature. And I've done that. For example, nine months ago, I think I made a video that was like, I've been getting back into coding and having a lot of fun because that was a point in time when I felt like I was getting really rusty. And I told myself like, I need to get back in the code base and just do some work because otherwise like I'm, I'm just gonna lose all my ability. And that's what I did, right? And so the point that I'm trying to make here is that by continuing to every now and then develop a feature. Like lately I would say two to three days a week, I'm spending at least a couple of hours coding some sort of feature or fixing some sort of bug or doing some sort of refactor just to keep me in the loop, keep me in the know-how, keep that muscle memory in, you know? And so what you can do is you can work on side projects. Because for example, maybe you're an engineering manager or maybe you're in some different role that no longer involves coding, but you were a software engineer. And so you don't have the chance to do that at work, but on the weekends or on your free time, you can work on a game, an app, a website, whatever you need to be able to still code. Now, the second thing that you can do, which might be a little bit trickier, but is to keep doing code reviews. Now, as a manager, you might have the opportunity to do that, depends on your company and your team, but that's certainly something that I've continued to do. And again, I'm in this weird position where at Algo Expert, we only have two front end engineers, me and Simon. So I've reviewed most of Simon's front end pull requests, you know, code. Some of them I just don't review and I just kind of blindly trust, but a lot of them, especially the complicated ones, I'll still review. So I still get that practice of seeing someone else's code, someone who is you know, completely a software engineer is doing this every day, and that keeps me on point. I also review all of the content code on Algo Expert. So new Algo Expert problems or new front end expert coding problems. I review, I give suggestions. Sometimes I even add my own solution as an additional solution. And that has helped keep me, you know, up to date and, and helped me not forget how to code. The final thing that I have sort of done implicitly via the Algo Expert content code reviews that I would, you know, shamelessly recommend you do is to do one algorithm coding problem a day, if you can, or maybe every week, you know, maybe a few times a week, because perhaps you don't have the time or the desire to do an actual coding project. Code reviews just don't make sense with the way that your life is like set up. You don't have anybody's code to review, but you can certainly do coding interview problems. Like if you do an algo expert problem a day or a week, you will at the very least keep flexing those foundational programming skills and muscles, and it will keep you, you know, confident that you can write a function, you can manipulate objects, you can manipulate classes. And so that's a great way to not become too rusty. Ultimately, I think that if you have worked as an actual software engineer for at least a year or two, you will have a base level of programming knowledge and ability that will never truly go away. Like it's like if you've worked out for multiple years and you take a year long break from the gym, 
when you go back, you'll still know how to bench press or how to squat. It'll just feel very weird at first and very maybe like unnatural or not as natural as it used to. Well, same thing for programming. You'll put your hands on the keyboard, you'll open your IDE, your terminal, and you'll feel very weird, but you're never gonna truly forget how to do it. But you can get pretty rusty and perhaps even very rusty. So try to do the three things that I said. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Do you have any other ideas for how to avoid becoming rusty? Have you become rusty in the past or maybe right now? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content, Instagram if you like pictures, and I will see you in the next video.